Those of you who have followed my stories every Friday have heard about the classic car that we use as a, an evangelist. Many years ago, I was in Canada and visiting a gentleman who had a collection of cars. He was a believer, and I said to him, uh, you wouldn't be interested in sending one of your children to the mission field, would you? And uh, we were able to make arrangements, and we uh, were able to use this 1955 Oldsmobile. It needs a little help right now. I wish we had some Christians that were good at fixing some of the rust spots. But nonetheless, we've used it very effectively. It's a wonderful way to share the gospel. Some of you have seen my little handout, the beautiful piece of art that was done by our friend Glenn Hayes out in Winnipeg. I just wanted to tell a little story. I don't think you've heard this story before, but I was down at the Edgewater Mall, which is down on the Mississippi coast, and that's where a large collection of cars are parked and thousands of people coming through to look at the cars. And I had taken a little break from the car, and I'd gone into the mall itself uh, to grab a bite of lunch. But I took a quantity of these texts with me, and the first person I saw as I came into the the mall, was an African-American gentleman who was working as a custodian. He had one of these uh, push carts with mops and uh, various uh, pieces of equipment that he used in cleaning the mall. And I came over to him and uh, offered him one of the pictures, and I said, could I just explain the story to you? And I began to talk about how uh, the chronic problem of a classic car is rust. And uh, the chronic problem of a classic car lover rhymes with rust, starts with L. And lust does to us what rust does to a car. It ruins us. And how a classic car can't restore itself, somebody has to be willing to pay the price to make it new. Well, suddenly the man fell on his knees and he looked up to heaven, and he began to thank the Lord in the most amazing terms, with tears running down his cheeks. Thank you for answering my prayer, Lord. Do you know this is exactly what I needed? Well, as he got back to his feet, I said, what's your story, man? And he said, you know, I used to manage one of the big hotels here on the coast, but we had a family crisis, and I reached into the till and I took some of the hotel's money to get ourselves out of that crisis and I got caught. And I not only lost my job, I ended up in prison. And he said, there in prison, God dealt with me in a real way and he rescued me and he made me new. And he said, this is the only job I could get after I got out of prison. And he said, just recently, I was asked if I would speak to a large group of boys in this area here and tell them my story. And I didn't know how to formulate the story. And he took that text and he held it up and he said, this is my story. I was able to give him enough text to hand out to all the boys but he had prayed and asked the Lord to give him some clarity as to what he should tell the boys. And he said, God answered my prayer. And I thought of the scripture that says, They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And sometimes we miss those words, they overcame him. Who's him? Well, in the previous verse, we find out it's the accuser of the brethren. And you know, when we've failed in our lives, sometimes we feel that our mouths are shut. There's nothing we can say. The accuser of the brethren has a case. But no, they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. Thank God for the blood that takes people who have been defiled by sin and cleanses them. The scripture that says the blood of Jesus Christ cleanseth us from all sin is speaking to Christians. And having been cleansed, here was a man who had professed salvation before he went into prison. 
But while he was in prison, the Spirit of God worked in his heart and cleansed him and gave him a fresh start. And here he was, humbled, but gloriously restored and ready to tell his story how God had taken someone damaged by sin and made him new and gave him a glorious testimony. They overcame by the blood of the Lamb. They overcame him, the accuser of the brethren, by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. Perhaps I'm speaking to someone and you failed. As a believer, you failed and you feel like it's all over and you have no testimony. The Spirit of God wants to make you clean and give you another start, a fresh start, so that you can overcome the accuser of the brethren, having been cleansed by the blood of Christ. Not a fresh application of the blood, but a fresh appreciation of the blood. As the Spirit of God gives you a fresh testimony that God not only saves, but he restores and he recommissions. Failure is not final, and God is able to take us up and use us once again.